All right, I think we're going to go. All right, well, let's go ahead and get started. So firstly, thank you to everyone who has decided to register as well as showed interest in this. We are super happy. Um, but before we get all into that, my name is Brandon Johnston. I am the owner slash operator of S2S Creations and joined by me is Mike Griffin. He is also the head of Hometown Heat. Uh, he runs everything going on over there and has done a tremendous job so far. Um, and we also want to say a special thanks to Yellow Brick for host, having us host this and give you guys an opportunity to kind of see what it's like into our world of things. But before we get really into stuff, I'd like to go ahead and talk about a little quick disclaimer. Um, I'm sure a lot of you guys are wondering what this is going to be about, what we're going to touch on. But just so you guys are all aware, because we like to be transparent with you guys, we're touching base on sneaker customization from a very novice standpoint. This is not gonna be a full-blown lesson where Mike and I go through this step-by-step-by-step -by -step -by -step of, of the process. So we just wanna be upfront with you guys. Um, we are gonna be giving you guys multiple tips going forward. And it is gonna be something that we think is knowledgeable for you guys. And at the same time as this, it's also free. So it's a great uh, time value if you wanna look at it that way for you guys. Um, afterwards, we will be having a Q&A, about 15 minute mark. Um, towards the end and we'll let you guys know when that is. So feel free to just go ahead and ask us any questions at that point. But until then, please hold all your questions because we know you're gonna have more to, to ask us anyways. So without further ado, I wanna go ahead and let Mike introduce himself first. So Mike, go ahead. Hey, thanks Brandon. All right, so my name is Mike Griffin. Um, I own and operate Hometown Heat, as Brandon was saying. I live in Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, I specialize in paint and shoes as well as doing handmade pairs. Um, I started out during the pandemic last year, met Brandon through then. I've kept the mama mentality throughout my workflow. Just every pair I do, I try to make better than the last. Um, <clears throat> pretty much some of my accomplishments would be doing this with Brandon. You know, this is pretty big platform to get us out there, you know, let people see what we're doing, as well as I handmade a pair for Jeremy Lamb of the Indiana Pacers earlier this year. Um, Brandon, would you like to tell them a little bit more about S2S? Yeah, for sure. So some of you may know me as S2S. Um, I'm the owner operator of it, and I mainly focus on cord winning, which is a term we'll touch on in a little bit. And I also do some teaching as well. Um, I started about two and a half years ago and graduated from the Sneaker Essentials program about a year ago. Um, my current base of operations right now is in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, but I am originally from Raleigh, North Carolina. So me and Mike do share some ties together. Um, some of my achievements also include launching my own business in the middle of a pandemic, uh, which we will touch on that at some point, as well as creating a special one of one AJ one low 85 edition for PJ Tucker, the sneaker king himself. So other than that, that's pretty much going to be it for intros. Uh, I want to go ahead and kind of move this on to Mike. Uh, Mike does more of the painting side of customizing. I don't really do any of that. I know a little bit about it, but Mike is definitely the go-to guy for that. So again, Mike, I'm going to let you go ahead and say what you got to say on uh, painting. All right. So painting, we're not going to spend a whole lot of time on this, guys. Um, it's a lot easier to get more information on the web about painting. Um, we figure people's focus are going to be more on the bespoke handmade side. Uh, so pretty much when it comes to painting, real quick, the most important part is going to be your prep. You're going to want to remove any type of base factory finish. It's going to be like a glossy shimmer on the shoe. You can hit it in the light. Um, you're going to use either like Angelus Deglazer or straight up acetone and a cotton swab to do that. Um, then when you get to talking about what type of paints. You only want to use acrylic paints. Um, the reason for this is acrylic paints are the most flexible paints. With a shoe, it's going to be bending in a ton of different directions and you don't want your paints to crack and creep. So definitely I recommend like Angelus is definitely the way. Um, I will be posting a link, uh, my referral link for them. Um, with finishers, which is going to protect your paint, make them more waterproof, scrap resistance and everything as such. I recommend LK Kicks. Um, they come in a bunch of different finishes, matte, factory, glosses. Um, 
Now the process of actually applying them is also extremely important. It doesn't matter if you're going to do hand brushing or airbrushing, light multiple coats is the key. Thick coats are going to look thick, they're not going to be even, it's going to look like paint. If you put light coats on it where your first couple coats, you still see white even through to the base, then you know you're on the right track. Um, if you do airbrush, you can kind of see behind me, you're going to want to get like a booth or something ventilated um, with an exhaust fan if you're doing it inside. Um, there are chemicals and everything and all these paints and finishers. Um, so you don't want to you know, be breathing any of those. Uh, I will have on my Instagram as well, if y'all want to follow me, some more information to touch more base on paint. But I wanted to keep this moving towards more of what our focus in is tonight. So. Yeah, so with all that said, thanks, Mike, for all that valuable information. I'm sure a lot of people out there are definitely appreciative of that stuff, especially for beginners. This is going to be an awesome opportunity for all of you guys, even if you're not even wanting to make this a business or maybe this is just a hobby for you, or maybe it's just something different and you want to express yourself in another way. This is definitely tonight where you want to be because we're going to focus on all things that. So um, starting off, we kind of want to talk about how we navigate through the craft of shoemaking. And to navigate, you kind of have to go back and look at see what this craft is called. This craft is known as cord waning. Now, cord waning, uh, it's an old English term that basically just refers to people or cobblers, rather, that would take a pre-existing product, in this case a shoe, and deconstructing it and reconstructing it using premium materials or any materials really that you want to use. Uh, it's been around for quite a while in all honesty, but I think it just now has con kind of caught on to the sneakerhead, like, I guess genre is a good way you could put it, which is not a bad thing. Um, but you think what, probably about the last year or so, yeah. it's like really caught fire, I feel like. Yeah, I would, I would definitely agree with that. And it's just now, it's, it's blowing up even more and more now. You see guys like the shoe surgeon, JBF Customs, um, those guys I consider to be like the OG goats of like, our craft basically yeah, for um, sure. definitely if you don't know who those guys are it's amazing you don't know who they are but you definitely got to go check both of those guys out respect to both of them as well as some of the older guys out there as well so this is going to be an interesting one because i came at this from a i took an, a traditional class a four-day class in los angeles whereas mike kind of went at this solo in a sense of he did a lot of trial and error and found his way through it in his own unique way and there, this is the one thing people will always tell you, there isn't a right way to do this. There, there's definitely right practices, but there's not a, a one all, like end all be all way to just do it. And that's kind of what we're here to like, kind of reveal about this whole process. Yeah, so uh, like, do you I'm sure me and you build shoes similar, yeah. but different. Like, and yeah, yeah, you yeah. learn something with every pair, right? Like, exactly. Sure. So, um, just keeping that in mind, guys, he and I both come from different disciplines, but neither one is necessarily the right one or the wrong one. It's just something that we both have kind of learned throughout our, our time doing this. And we're both pretty young still at, at what yeah. we do. Um, with no different than a lot of you. A year ago today, I was like looking for a webinar like this, like, hey, where can I figure out what I need just to get me started? Exactly. Um, and with that said, actually, uh, that's a good transition into like tools needed. So, uh, Mike, do you just want to kind of some of the tools? Real quick? Yeah, let me walk down to my studio real quick. And uh, down in the garage, I'm in my paint area right now. So while Mike is transitioning, I'll show you guys some of the tools, and he'll show you the back end of some of them. But uh, I know one of the biggest questions that I get, as well as he probably gets as well, is what are the tools I need to get started? And some of the tools that you need to get started are definitely different. Um, if you're a leather worker, you might know some of these. If you're not, if you're totally new to this, then you're going to be like, whoa, I didn't even know that they made those. But this tool right here is known as a lasting pencil. So you guys can see it. And Mike, you can show yours as yeah, well. Yeah, we got pretty much the same. Yep, yep. So basically, these guys just open up like this. This holds with the method known as lasting, which is basically taking excess upper and wrapping it around what we call a last All right. right and then i have a different type there's two different types of last as you can see yep the so, end. like you have your tendo hinge last mm -hmm. and it opens up a little bit differently from mine um this v hinge last 
And this one, obviously it's pretty nice why it's called that. Um, some of them have their benefits. I wouldn't say either one has a drawback per se, but it really just comes down to what you like working with. What you get used to. Yeah, exactly. I work with these more, so I'm more used and familiar with these now. Oh. Yeah, definitely. Um, so that, and, and then the next one, Mike, did you want to show them some of your patterns that you have? Yeah, um, so I have some patterns right here already cut out. Um, pretty much all shoes are going to start with the last and a pattern. The pattern is just going to be your outline of your pieces of your shoes. So, you know, your toe cap, your vamp. Um, there's a couple different ways to do this. Uh, Brandon, I know he actually outlines these, hand traces on, hand cuts his leather. Me, I go the more easier route. I have a Cricut Maker machine, and I'm able to digitize my patterns, load them into Cricut, and let the Cricut do all the work so it's precise. Takes a little bit more time. You know, it's a bigger, another piece of yeah. machine that you have to invest in. But if you are painting, you can use the Cricut um, with permanent vinyl to make your stencils. Um, I've cut everything from paper to vinyl, this t-shirt, you know, vinyl leathers, all the way to four or five inch veg stain with it. So, oh yeah, you don't underestimate the power of, of machinery. As long as, I will say, there is one caveat to that. Make sure you, you double check everything, triple check everything before oh, close to cutting and yeah. I mean, I'm sizing of getting your sizings right like we're not we have nowhere near enough time tonight to go in on like proper ways of doing that um there is more stuff you can find online on um, in classes uh such as s2s um reach out to me and i can help you thanks <laughs> so um and you'll also see in the sneaker essentials course if um, which is a great course, you'll see they'll talk about different methods and it's all about streamlining um, and the benefits of using machines towards using hands. Yeah, and some of the, um, some of the other things I wanted to show, I know we're throwing a lot at you guys and thank you for, for just hanging in there, but trust me, it's worth it. Some of the other uh, different tools, I guess you could say, that we have in the shoemaking arsenal would be, uh, this is a very cheap version of what is known as a Skyver. So obviously if you're familiar with like shaving and like how you shave your face and whatnot, this kind of does that same motion, but for leather. So the idea of a skiver is to basically thin out areas of leather, specifically edges, where you would be stitching or where you would be putting a lot of material on. Um, this is like the low budget, super friendly version. Mike, you have another version there. Do you want to kind of so talk? This is like a mid-grade version. It's still super budget. You know, the one that Brandon was holding is up like nine, twelve dollars. This one's forty and it mounts to a desk. Um you adjust the the depth on it so you get one even consistent pull. It's turning out to be a pretty great investment. Um yeah. I think skiving is one of the tougher things to do. Um yeah. I, I, or the I, I, I wouldn't say tougher, tedious. Yeah, I, I, I would agree with that. I think it's one of those where people just think yeah, I'm just gonna go right through this real fast. And that's usually not how that works. Either one of two things happens. They either use the wrong technique or they either their blades aren't sharp enough. And that's a pro tip. So for anybody wondering how they can get better cuts, how they can, you know, skive better or whatever it may be, make sure your tools are sharp. It's gonna help you out a lot more in the long run and you're gonna have a lot more control over what you do versus injuring yourself. You could easily, you could easily injure yourself. I've cut off some, yeah. some pieces here and there. So but anyways, blood, sweat, and tears with every pair. Yes, yeah, right. exactly. Um, and then with skiving, since you're we're right there at that. Um, me myself, I have a did a, a gauge, a thickness yep. gauge, so that helps you keep your when you are skiving and doing any type of cutting on your leather, um, to assure that it stays the same thickness throughout. Um, these is a simple, cheap, I think seven eight dollar tool. With that said, we will be posting on our Instagrams. I know we're moving so fast. Um, we will be posting on our Instagrams probably tomorrow a list of all these tools and where you can get them. Yeah, and then um, just some other things going down the list too. Uh, another good one is a uh, good old bone folder. <laughs> Funny you pulled that out at the same time. We didn't Thank God. Here's the other option. <laughs> but yeah, but this is uh, this is what's known as a bone folder. And this right here, um, 
essentially helps with taking off guys like this, the soul. So a lot of people have, have different methods of doing it. Um, it's sole purpose is not just to take off souls. A lot of wallet makers use this, bag makers use it. Many other leather craftsmen, craftswomen use it quite a bit. Um, it just makes your job easier. And the reason why I say that is because it usually just can get in these grooves and pry off the upper extremely easy. Um, you gotta use it in usually collaboration with acetone or what is known as new. I use, depending on if you're wanting to save the uppers, like I have a thing I'm doing with my uppers, so I'm not trying to have them all melted. So also you can get just a Walmart cheap $25 pressure steamer um, definitely helps. Uh, yeah, I would agree. I would agree. I haven't used that method, but I'm curious. And it looks like it works quite well for a lot of people out there. Definitely works well, I will say, on older pairs. So, like, if you go out and buy a brand new that was just released, you know, like an Air Force One that's just a general release that was made recently, um, acetone is going to work better. But if you hop on and you're finding a shoe that's two or three years old, um, that you're just trying to get the soles off of, the, the steamer is the way to go. And while we're mentioning soles, um, I think we both are on the same page of recommending if you are doing this, the one thing that you do is you get a authentic retail pair of shoes and use the soles. Um, yeah. Especially yeah. if you're going to try, if you're trying to sell your work, uh, yeah. they are made different. There is an air bubble in them, um, and you're buying the Nike product at that point, so yeah. you're not just making a. It's a fine. <laughs> it's a yeah. fine. It's yeah, a I'm, sure. I'm sure though. I'm sure everyone's kind of been you know, looking at the sneaker industry in a different light lately with everything that's going on, but I don't want to go down that rabbit hole right yeah, now. Yeah, that's it. Um, so next would be probably all. Um, so this is used, you can do the whole shoe with this. I know people that do what we do that don't have a sewing machine. They stitch an entire shoe with this. Me personally, I use a sewing machine and this is what I use to stitch the sidewalls on after I attach the uppers, so this is an upper <laughs> attached. Brandon's going to have one over there. Yep. And then you have one that is closed as well. Uh, yeah, I do. So I'm not supposed to show this yet, but whatever. So, oh, that's so pretty. Yep. So this one is a closed up upper. Um, what These are you? the different stages that you're going to be getting as you go through. Um, once you get to where Brandon is, you're going to put it on the last, and then it's going to get mounted to, you're going to semen it to the sole. Once you pull the last out, you're going to need uh, an awl to be able to put your side stitching back in. So, yeah, exactly. I love that material right there, Brandon. <laughs> elephant, everybody loves elephant print, man. Uh, yeah, I got a good Elsa right here. I know oh, yeah. you got some of this. I've uh, saved it though. I'll let everybody else go through it. I'm waiting for the uh, for the leather section later tonight, guys. We're actually yeah. making a really good time, so we'll have plenty of uh, plenty of opportunities to show you guys some of the cool leathers that we've got. And don't worry, we will we will tell you where we got most of our stuff from. So yeah, we're not. That's kind of like you know what we're doing this for. It was with me trying, like Brandon said, he went to a class, and I went searching on the rabbit hole of read it everywhere just sending people instagram messages i mean i saw brandon's work sent him a message on instagram and we started talking found out we lived you know he was from right where i was moving to uh and it was hard for me to get information of just the basics of how to get started so that's kind of why i try to reach out and make this happen tonight um and then I do see some people have asked questions in the Q&A. Yes, we will do a, a list. We will post a list of all the materials you need, the tools. Yeah, so it looks like we had a couple more things to talk about in terms of uh, tools and whatnot, and we'll, we'll run through those super quick. I actually, funny enough, I don't have any marking pens. I know you probably do. I've got some right here. So I have two different types, actually. So I have... um. From District Leather, you'll hear us talk about District Leather Supply a lot. They're a great source for most of these tools. Um, this is their silver marking pen. It is not a race. It's good for more of doing your patterns and stuff like that on insides um, stuff because it does show up really well. 
But the go-to marketing plan for me is just this generic pack off Amazon. They're heat erasable fabric pens. So what you do is you put your outlines, you're going to mark your outlines from your patterns on your shoe. But then when you hit this with a heat gun, the, the ink's going to disappear. So you don't have to worry about actually washing it off. Um, Super helpful. And also, if you if you don't have access to those like me, for whatever reason, I just got lazy and didn't buy them, I guess. Um, so sorry about that, guys. But different, different, different methods. You yeah. have an engraver. So another another method is this is known as a uh, this is scratch all is what this yep. is called. It's extremely common in pretty much any leather craft. Um, however, if you don't have the funds or you don't have the time to go get yourself some some marking pens, you can actually use this to mark like through the lines right here as like a pencil or almost mm -hmm. like a like a pen. Just keep in mind, whatever you mark, it is going to be permanent because you're scratching leather at that point. So you can try and buff it out if you mess up, but just be super careful. And I honestly wouldn't, this is more of like an advanced tip and maybe something like if you just don't have access to something, don't use a ballpoint pen, don't use anything like that. Use something that can be forgivable, like, you know, a heat erase pen, the silver marking pen, anything that you can just take away right away if you mess up, it's worth having. Um, but yeah, yeah I have one in my toolbox because with these heat erasable pens, they don't last long, like storage, whatever, so reason. So, you, and, you know, I don't know where to get one any, any local. So, it's if they run out in the middle of a project. Yeah, the only local place I know if you can get them, they're a little pricey, it's handy. So if you look, if you guys look well, now, you know, I just moved, so I'm right down the road from play. You go, yeah. He's more, exactly where that candy is, actually. Um, yeah, if you live near a leather store, and I mean like a legitimate leather retailer, not some like place that sells bags or whatever, make sure you call ahead and, and they have something like that or tools that are good for that. Also, um, another thing while we we're talking about kind of erasable stuff is crepe. So if you guys ever know or have heard of like the Clark's Wallabies, which I don't know, when, I can't remember when those were really in style. Um, but basically, this is just like a rubber crepe is what this is called. And this is like a lifesaver, man. Lifesaver for suede, anything. It saves, it literally will save any type of material, including, including metal. Yeah, so, getting glue. That's what I used it. I, I didn't today. Um, I was working, but to get the glue off of, because that will happen. This is what you're, they're going to look like after you use them. That, yeah, that one needs a, that one needs a cleaning for sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, so, you know, if, you know, worst case scenario, if you do have a pair of Clark's Wallabies and you're not wearing them anymore, there you go. There's your uh, free, free eraser for the night, but that gets off literally anything. Um, even if, even after it's already dried, that's like the craziest mm -hmm. part about it. Um, and they're super cheap. Uh, I wanted to talk about, Mike, you mentioned that you use a Cricut for your cutting and whatnot. I, a lot of people ask me, like, what do I use for some of my cutting when, when it comes to leather? Um, I use a combination of leather shears and an exacto. I've used a Cricut before, um, but for me, like, I, I don't know. It's just a personal thing. I just like handling the leather myself and just, I'm a very like hands-on person, yeah. that kind of stuff. And, um, I just, for me, that's just my comfort level. I would say that if, if, it, if you, if you have like six shoes, you have to get done for whatever reason, maybe go the cricket route. It might be just now the cricket. It has its downsides, you know, like the blades, yeah. uh, that's 25 to $50 every project. Yeah. Just going blades and mats. So, yeah. um, there is, there is the cost to it, but it does, you know, time is money as well. So. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So other than that, those are gonna kind of cover tools for. Uh, right Dremel, probably. Oh, right. Dremel is gonna be a good tool for multiple reasons. Um, I so, can show this. Yeah. Hey, oh, look, we grabbed the same. Look, look at that. Same shape. Hey, we didn't plan this, <laughs> We did not plan this part. I promise. Yeah, we did not. Same shoe. Uh, so yeah, to buff out. So you can see, I still have some work to do on this one. It's going to be more of a clean, clean one. What you're going to do is just get a good, good surface for your glue to adhere to, um, rough it up a little bit. You're also going to do it on the inside under the lasting line, um, for yeah. on your materials. I 
think I remember there was a, a course in the in the sneaker essentials, uh, you know, curriculum. Sorry, uh, is that there is what's called like a shoe finisher, and that's mm -hmm. these things. It's it's the most non-creative name ever for something like this. And if you just Google search it, it probably won't come up. But a uh, shoe finisher, I actually have a buddy down the road. He has one. I'm very jealous because that's the one machine that I really wish I had. Um, it's basically a bigger version of a Dremel. And if you're not familiar with what a Dremel does, all it is is like an electric tool. Almost like a belt sander. Yeah, there you go. It's like a belt sander. There you go. So right. it just basically helps smooth out, smooth out the leathers and, and any, of the, any of the material that you got just hanging on there by a thread. And we'll smooth it all for you so you can create a better uh, surface to adhere the bottom of the sole to the, uh, to the upper. So yeah, uh, for people that got the big bucks, that's one, that's one to maybe look at. Uh, but yeah, other than that, were there any other tools, Mike, that you kind of wanted to go over? Um, so there's last, uh, for the last thing. So Brandon uses a lasting post. Um, this is kind of what me and Brandon are doing. Brandon's got more of some of your more advanced, your higher end stuff. I've got a lot of more of your budget. If you die hard, want to do this. Um, there's benefits and downsides to both. So Brandon's got what. I might, post. Yeah, I might show them what this actually does because I know a lot yeah. of people like that you can do. So, so you want to just while I get this set up. Do you want to tell them like how you do it with your uh, yeah. Okay. yeah. So what that is is what Brandon has is next on my list of things. Um you it's how you're gonna break the last off. So if you notice these last look like this, your shoe's gonna be wrapped around it completely. When that happens. This is the exact same size. It's pretty much a mold of your foot. So you can't just pull it out of the shoe. You actually have to physically break it. Um, as you can see, it's extremely hard, and I'm kind of worried to do it right here around my computer. Um, yeah, um, it's extremely hard to do with what I have right here. And yeah, since, I, since I'm not set up, like in my work chair, I'm on a rinky deep school right now. Brandon's going to show you the benefit of having what he has. Um, yeah. A lot of my tools, I have to work harder, you know, because I'm getting by with what I've got. But that's there's nothing wrong with that, y'all. Like I can still show you, I make great quality product with getting by. Um, I agree. I, I definitely, I definitely agree with what, what Mike is saying. Um, the tools don't necessarily make the craftsman. That's yeah. definitely. Um, so. What I'm going to show you guys super quick is just the, uh, it's called breaking a last is what the technical term is for this using a lasting pin. Typically this would be drilled down into the table. So it won't like wobble, but I'm going to use my right hand to actually hold this down while I do this. Basically it's going to break right here and it's just going to act as leverage. So I'm going to go down like that. And then typically I would slide the shoe off and this would stay on the last. And you see how much easier that is than trying to hold because you also have to take into consideration when I'm trying to do this, your finished product is on here. So a slip, a drop on a concrete, there could be 25 hours of work, 40 hours of work, hundreds of dollars worth of material ruin like that because it, you scuffed it and dropped it. So yeah. the other thing I wanted to show super quick, because you have a Tendo last and I know mm -hmm. kind of, uh, and people are probably like, well, what's the difference in terms of how it breaks? So what you guys just saw was the V hinge break and not just this part folds up. Tendo is a little, that, yeah. this one you're gonna like pull towards you. Sorry for just shaking, but essentially it'll break off like that. It's just a different way to break it, that's all. That's I all. do feel like these are harder to break than they these as, as well. Yep. Um, now, where we are gonna be recommending y'all to get your last in your patterns from at the end of this, this is the type you, you will be getting. Um, and I don't know, they're, it's my favorite to work with. I can, I can add on to that. A, a, another reason why it's a good thing to use that, this is the last little thing because we'll have to move on, but one, one, one second, guys, I just want to show you why it's sometimes a good idea to have a Tendo last instead of a V-hinge last. So when you get more into your craft, when you're making you design your own. Yeah, when you're designing your own shoe. So this was this is a Yeezy, is what you're looking at, a Yeezy 350 V2, um, which is not not a good one to learn first because it's a knitted sneaker. It's extremely hard to replicate. One piece, completely hard. Um, essentially, what you're looking at here is 
uh, a V hinge last. But the problem is, is that, well, one, I had to build it up here with a piece of paper. And then two, uh, you can easily poke through the V area right here as well. So when you have a Tendo last, it's actually easier to draw on it. Yeah. So that way you're not poking through the tape and like, what's going on? Why am I not like, you're not, you're not, you know, throwing stuff all over the place. Cause that's, you'll get frustrated really fast. For sure. This is frustrating enough. Trust me. That's why I haven't made a easy pattern in like two years. But anyways, um, okay. So moving on to equipment. Um, Mike, do you kind of want to go ahead and show them what you've got yeah. going on? So I've got like equipment wise, um, we went over your base, those were your hand tools. Your bigger equipment um, is going to be like your sewing machine, sew press. I've got the basic. I've got what is called a Chinese leather catcher. Um, you can kind of see it behind me. I'll walk a little closer to it. Um, <clears throat> this is just a big crude piece of metal. It's a hand crank. Uh, it was designed in like the 1860s. Uh, it works when it works. Um, but Brandon will tell you too, even the nice sewing machines, a sewing machine you become one with. Yeah. You I mean um, pretty much that machine behind me, you can get one of those for about a hundred bucks off of Amazon. Uh, it's called a, it's a post bed style, which gives you more range. Um, that's definitely what we, what I recommend. Um, you don't want to get a flat bed style, uh, to do shoes. It, it's doing the curve, especially around the vamp and everything's really tough with a flat bed. I have a flat bed underneath that. Um, so that I will also, you know, there'll be a link to them, uh, 100, 150 bucks. You're probably going to have some tinkering to do with it out of the box and learning, but it gets the job done. Um, I can show you like some of my finished work. Do you? Yeah, that's really clean cool. stitching. And this was like the third shoe I made. Um, that's good. Um, yeah. What uh, Mike has, guys, like, don't, like, it, again, it's not the tools or the equipment that make the artist. Like, it's not at all. No, you can, you could literally have the nicest sewing machine in the world, and it's not going to make a damn bit of a difference unless you know how to actually use it and you practice it over and over and over again. Anyone that's played sports, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. It's always been like that with anything you do. And now, you know, like, when I first started, my sewing machine, I'd get like halfway through a project and something would go wrong. And I'd hit the forms trying to figure it out. Now I kind of know it. it's just, you know, it's become an attachment of me. It's about the most important part, most important tool you have to do this, you know, quick. Like I said, I do know people who hand stitch it, but like, that's, <laughs> a, that's a whole nother beast. Like, yeah, kudos, kudos to those guys because that is yeah. just. Um, um, right, that's where I draw the line. You want to tell them about that cool machine you've got sitting right behind you? It's, yeah. Oh, it, mind if, I now show if you me. sign up for the Sneaker Essentials course um, by Yellow Brick, who's put this on for us, great course. They actually show this exact machine in the course. Um, I'm sure um, Brandon's going to make a lot of people that make shoes pretty envious right now with what he's going to show. Well, it wasn't cheap. That's all I got to say. It was definitely no. not. And but, no, I mean, it saves time. That's not a flex by any means, guys. That is literally just like I bought this on Black Friday, so I'm a I'm a deal saver. Like when I have a chance to be one. But anyways, um, okay. So what we've got, I'm gonna see if I can bring this a little bit closer. It is a little bit of an awkward angle, so I apologize, guys. So give me one second. Okay. So what this is is this is known as a sidewall stick. Probably saw this. If you haven't gotten to it yet, you will see this at some point in the course. Uh, but this is an industrial grade sidewall stitcher, and this mainly helps with sewing on shoes that have stitching guidelines, like grooves right through here in this channel. And essentially, we, me and Mike, we would do this using a hook all and literally and put one, your hand all one, the way in here and grab it blindly these holes and i can tell you right now in a size 10 there's around like 24 holes or something like that there might be more than that i don't know and how many but, times have you stabbed your finger doing it we don't want to talk about these that. are short yeah, it, it's, yeah. I've, I've, bruised, I've bruised a knuckle pretty bad actually guys so sorry if got like a you know weak stomach but that stuff hurts but 
This essentially is what you would see in any uh, industrial footwear facility. Um, basically, I'm not going to show you guys exactly how it works because I actually had to unplug it because it doesn't reach the cord. But basically, uh, this would go right here and it has a swinging arm that you essentially move with it. And the upper, imagine the upper is already on this piece. And this would be like the final step before your product is ready to go to market. Um, and that essentially just means that that's it. Once that's done, then you obviously either need to wear test them depending on if they're a brand new design. Um, you should wear test them anyways, in my opinion, but that's just kind of, uh, that's just kind of how, how it works. And this job, this guy makes your life a whole lot easier. Like, hey, yeah. I mean, to me, the, the part that I, I love making shoes, like I, I love doing this. I stay up late nights. I've, I'm at where I am a year, a year later because of how much I love it. Um, but the one part I do not ever look forward to is stitching the sidewalls by hand on, um, it's just, it's hard, especially on smaller shoes. You know, like when I did Jeremy Lambs, that was a size 13 and it still was tough. Um, and it's time consuming and you get worn out from it. Uh, and yeah. it's, it's hand stitching to another level. Yeah. Um, and I would say that I, mean, I have a cut, you know, cut from pulling the, just thread. pulling the thread. Uh, that's another thing we did not mention. Normally a good set of leather gloves. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. For, sure. for beginners. I don't, I don't have them. When I started, I should have, it would have saved me a lot of, you know, a, a couple of white pieces of leather at that. Yeah. Yeah. Also, um, I'm going to show them real quick, a post bed sewing machine. Um, yeah. so just bear with me guys. I'm going to show you guys, uh, what you got here, but basically I uh, sorry if the lighting is bad, but this right here was my first ever machine. Um, this is the artisan four, six, one, eight. Again, that's artisan four, six, one, eight. So if anyone's wondering what I use, this is what I use, what I learned on. Can you show them the wheel, the, the wheel a little bit closer? The yeah, so like the wheel down here, you mean? Yeah, and the foot, because I want to show them the difference between yours and mine. I, mine's a press foot. So I got a massive plate. Sorry, this is so awkward because I'm not down there. But yeah, that's kind of what it, that's how big the plate is down there. Um, oh, you meant like the, the foot as well. Sorry. I yeah. So. My bad. So if you notice his is a wheel which gives you way better motion on um, mine's a presser foot so it like pushes down and then pulls which you can also you know leave more markings in the materials um yeah so this is what he's talking about guys this wheel right here yeah so that's one of the benefits of you know when you go and look at the price of that machine compared to the 150 dollars machine behind me uh and you say why that's one of the reasons, you know, we don't have enough time to like break all that down, yeah. but I wanted to point that out. It's not a cheap machine, but again, like I've had my fair a fair amount of issues with that machine. Um, not saying that Artisan's bad. I think it honestly came down to more to maybe user error because I, I had more issues with that machine when I was just starting out than I do nowadays. So mm -hmm. um, I would say too that when you do have a machine, either like Mike's or like mine, it's definitely going to be one of those things where you kind of have to become your own mechanic because yep. in my opinion, like if you're going to spend this amount of money on a, on a sewing machine, any equipment, you probably you should not should know it inside and out. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. Especially if you're trying to do this as a business, these machines, if something happens halfway through a product or um, through a project, excuse me, something that happens halfway through a project and then you, it's not like somebody works in every town on, um, you know, not, there's not somebody in every town that builds shoes, much less that has sewing machines like these. So yeah, you got to kind of know how to figure it out on your own or it's going to cost you money. Yeah. And honestly, with that said, like, don't be afraid to go ask, like, if there's a local cobbler in your area that's highly rated or maybe just, you know, of like ask the guy or woman or whoever it may be, Hey, can I like sit in on like a session and just like see how you do things, like, see how you take care of your machines? Like, and honestly, more times than not, yes, those people are typically older generation, but they love it when someone comes in there and is interested in their craft and is willing to give. There's not respect. many people our age that do this yeah. now. So I found that as well, that the older people, the, the older generation, and that kind of leads us into what we want to talk about next is like paying respect to the people that were here before us. Um, when you show that you really want to do this craft, there are accepting people in it. 
um, the sneaker essentials course, the, the school group of people, it's not really a competition It's more, it is like, Hey, let's all learn together. Um, like I said, I reached out to Brandon asking him before I made my first pair of shoes and it's crazy that you know, we're doing this now, but he was one of the people I had questions about and, you know, he took the time and gave me some answers and set me on the right track. But it's a lot too of you have to respect the people that were doing this before that there wasn't somebody that just gave them the answers, right? So, you know, show the dedication that, you know, you really want this and that, you know, you appreciate their designs. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah. To, to Mike's point, like, it's just one of those things where um, nowadays ethics is a big thing. Uh, it's, it's a really big thing. And I think it's more about just respecting each other's craft, like you said, and just realizing like, this is all about collaboration, guys. This isn't like, like for instance, Mike could have easily just been like, well, why would I want to give airtime to Brandon? Or like, I could have even been like, why would I want to give airtime to Mike? And yeah. it's not even about, honestly, guys, if you guys give all your business to Mike, I don't, I don't even care if you do. But if you do, that's awesome. I'm happy for him. I'm happy for what we do. It means that he and I completed this objective of educating you guys and getting you guys to where you need to be. So that to me, yeah. That's, that's yeah, exactly. And like Brandon's got some news that I'm gonna let him drop to you later. And it's, I feel the same with Brandon. Like, um, yeah, um, it, it's not, you're not going to get anywhere from trying to compete doing this. Yeah, exactly. You know, it, it can be fun. It can be friendly that at times. Yeah. But I think at the end of the day, respect each other's craft. That's the biggest yeah. rule right there. Um, but with that said, do you want to like, we haven't really talked about leather. I know we were kind of finishing up on machines. Yeah, let's try to do that real quick before we get in the uh, Q and A. So just like real basic, um, very first when you start, I highly recommend. We're about to show y'all some cool leathers. Um, don't go starting with these. Go try to buy some marine grade vinyl. Leather gets expensive quick, uh, and your first couple pairs aren't going to be. Perfect. I won't say that because like, I feel like my first pair, like I knocked out of the park, but most of the time it, it's not going to go that way for most people. Um, so like cheap, basic leathers to start would be an example. This is a Python, but it's actually a vinyl and it is a marine grade vinyl. So it's water resistant. Um, it doesn't st stretch on. Um, these are going to be your, your cool stuff to practice on. Also, when you're starting a business, these are going to be your entry level pairs. So, like this was for a raffle winner, it's an entry level pair. Um, still good quality stuff, but not like some of the, you know, the district leather elephant prints, like I was showing, and like the unicorn one Brandon had over there. Um, Brandon, do you have any exotics? I have some like crocodile. Yeah, I've got some. Yeah, actually, I do. I've got a one already on the shoe. So give me one second. Um, now we get into you know like some more exotics like some american crocodile um now this stuff's definitely the exotics are gonna be more expensive and they can be harder some of them are harder to use being thinner materials you have more steps oh that's i like that one brandon well right now white crocodile ain't cheap like no, oh, sure. not cheap but like white crocodile for whatever reason like it just is not a cheap material, man. And like, this was, I had a vision for this shoe, like super, super quick. Cause I know we want to get through this, but I had a vision for this shoe that I was going to make like one of the most expensive shoes I've ever made just to see how ridiculously expensive it could get. And uh, I was going to put like a diamond encrusted Dubre like on the bottom of it. And like, it was just going to be ridiculous. I'm not going to lie. I, I, hey, I mean, you talk about like, th that's what you got to do. You know, that's to get attention. You know, it's like the TV pair of mountain. Mm -hmm. Yep. TVs into yep. this bear. Yep. Um, and yeah. this is a good suede to show. So once again, district leather supply. Me and Brandon are both super fans of them. Bill over there, I've actually gone to Atlanta and met him in person, seen the shop. Um, they're a small individual in business, but they get some of the most premium leathers imported from Italy. Um, this suede right here is actually their rain away. Uh, yep. It is a waterproof suede, which yeah. is pretty amazing um i'll show i have one exotic uh i have a hide on me this was like one of my first ever builds guys 
So please don't judge everybody. Y'all are going to recognize this from the marketing for this webinar. This is one of my favorite. Yeah, believe it or not, this was actually the test pair. Like this is the pair that I just like, I rock these all over the place. And I, I'm surprised, man, because a lot of people were like, dude, dude, where'd you get those? Where'd you? I'm like, bro, I made these. Like, I, I do you this? find that people don't normally, when you say, hey, I made these, they don't grasp what you mean. No, I'm like, no, I'm not. I sewed them together. I cut all the leather. I put this shoe together. And yeah. that leads us into, you know, knowing what to charge. Like, people are going to ask us most about, like, why are customs so expensive? Well, it's knowing your worth and there's a lot of money invested, like patterns and last just to build your first ones. Like you're going to spend anywhere from two to $700 on a last and a pattern to make a shoe off the gate. That's no materials. That's no tools. That's nothing. So there's a lot that goes into it. A lot of time, a lot of knowledge. Like y'all all, you've spent an hour with us and we haven't scratched the surface of what you're going to need to know to be able to make this pair. So yeah. it's a handcrafted item. People are going to pay, you know, you have to understand that you have to pay for that. Um, you know, then, shoes, we don't make them in four hours. Yeah, I, I would say that that's like a huge misconception. Like I've had so many people like be like, oh, can I get this in like a week? And I'm like, bro, like material takes like a week just to get here. And that's yeah. actually gets here on time. Cause let me tell y'all, you know, UPS, FedEx, I'm sorry if you work for those two companies, but my God, the shipping is horrible. Like I had and some that, leather I was wanting to show off today that didn't, that yeah. I know it was shipped out, but the United States Postal Service says it hasn't been. Yeah, so <laughs> while well, well, you guys are, you know, fuming over your L's on the sneakers app, we're fuming over our L's on just getting material in, man. Like, it's one of those things where it's, it's a make or break situation. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think... The other thing too is, is like with materials, like that's what kind of sets like people that do this apart from you going to Nike uh, by you or used to be Nike ID um, or any quick shoe customization service like that. Don't get me wrong. That's a cool service. And I think it's a great price point for people that want to make their own unique shoe and especially have it made by Nike. That's even another cool thing. But the thing is, is that the stuff that we're making is not is not that like this is stuff it's that not the same we're using it's higher in material like yeah I mean, like look at this one for example like this is believe it or not this is the most expensive leather i have ever bought this was japanese shinki hikiyaku horse hide which is essentially El cordovan i'll say this for brandon it's hard like over over the camera it it doesn't translate but do it's the difference between a louis vuitton bag and a coach bag like, but yeah, and I, I mean, I'll, I'll tell you guys right now, like shell Cordovan leather, if you're not familiar or Cordovan or however you want, want to pronounce it, that leather in and of itself is one of the nicest. It's like, it's like a Kobe beef steak is yeah. how you would equate it to like the shoemaking world because it's yeah. kind of made in that same, it's kind of made in that same region, but essentially it's like the nicest, finest leather you can get on planet earth. So yeah, it, it can get expensive guys, but at the same time, like we're just trying to say like, that that kind of justifies partially of why we charge as much as we charge um mm. there's a ton of other factors that go into it but that's just for a brief overview that that's good enough for right now yeah. i think um real quick did you want to talk about internal guts do we have time to talk about that um i mean internal guts are pretty basic it's just you're going to have different types of foams they'll be on the list um toe puffs hill counters um so pretty much we want to, I know we've got a bunch of questions, it looks like. Yeah, um, I'm, you know, we, honestly, we'll probably answer some of these. In the questions. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, if you want to, if we want to go ahead and jump into the Q&A yeah. side. Of it, yeah. So, I mean, first, before we, because I think we'll run Q&A until it's time for us to log off. Um, just yeah. hometown heat on Instagram, y'all. If you're not there building a shoe yet, um, or, you know, if you want to paint a pair of gifts, I am taking orders now. Um, hit me up, Hometown Heat. I spell it H-E-E-T um, to play off, you know, feet. Um, and I am taking orders now. And then Brandon's got some really exciting news for y'all as well with S2S Creation. Yeah, so um, as you guys know, I'm, I'm pretty passionate about teaching. Uh, honestly, I get more joy out of that than I do almost like building shoes for 
high profile clientele or even just people in general. Don't get me wrong, I'll still take your orders all day long. But um, the teaching aspect is something that I just, I really would love to, to get some of you guys in, in the studio on a sewing machine, building your dream sneaker. Like that to me is like, when I see someone's face light up, like because of that, it's like, like that's how I know I did my job. Like I made them happy, they're enjoying it. They're getting a quality education yeah. at the same time for a good price. But yeah, basically guys, I'm actually, I've just launched a class um, and I'm gonna be dropping an Instagram uh, post about this in a bit. Uh, but as an added bonus, the class will be August 19th to the 22nd. It's a four day class. It's in Milwaukee. And uh, the other thing is too, is that you guys actually get a discount, 25% off of that class specifically. So if you want to, the discount is, it is in all caps, sneakers 101. And you can use that at checkout and it should save you guys a good 25% off of the total price. It includes tools, patterns. Uh, you pretty much get all the time with me and a couple other instructors that I'm, I'll, I'll hopefully be bringing up so you guys will get your fair share of attention. I promise you guys it was worth the money and hopefully I can bring Mike up there up here too. And he can get yeah. to teach you guys. As yeah. Well. I would love to, um, you know, I, I look up to Brandon, he does great work. And, uh, that's one thing that no matter where you're at in this, there's always something to be learned on um, different methods, different techniques and Brandon's class compared to some of the ones that you're going to see out there. He's not, Brandon, for as long as I've known him, he's not driven by money as much as he is by helping people. Um, his classes are going to be more personal and one-on-one. -on -one. Um, you know, I won't, I won't say one-on-one, -on -one, but smaller groups. Um, you're going to get more face time with Brandon. I'll put, it, well. yeah, I'll put it to you guys this way. If, if you're struggling on day one and we're supposed to be done at 5 p.m., you best believe I'm staying there the Same. whole time. So you are happy with with how I've taught you. Like, yeah, I'm not leaving the class at all. It just, I just plan on basically living there and just helping you guys out, getting to that point of walking out with the understanding of how a Jordan one is made and everything that you need to learn to continue to do this outside of the class. So, anyways, that's a lot of information. Go check it out on my website. Definitely go check out uh, Hometown Heat's Instagram. Hit him up for orders too, because he will kill your vision i promise you i yeah. promise you. oh oh one last thing because i'm sure somebody's going to mention envisions on uh, software so oh yeah there's numerous ways to do this you can use you know any type of design software the sneaker essentials they're sending out a pack right now for designing your own um if you go to the go to uh yellow brick sneakers facebook you can find their post they're sending an email so you're able to draw and color in um, I think it's a Jordan one, uh, but there's multiple from doing it paper to digital. It's always good, especially if you're doing a business to come up with a mock-up design and show that to your customer and have them sign off on it. Um, so that y'all are on the same page. Um, cause it yeah. can get hard, you yeah. know, well, that's um, what somebody sees in their head and what they tell you and what you translate that to can be two completely different things. Yep. Agreed. Uh, um, all right so um, i guess that takes us into our q a, Q &A. Side. yeah i've um, tried to type uh respond back to a couple of people already um okay. so i mean gerald uh bear with me if i like murder any any names <laughs> um <clears throat> but uh geraldo what what i what do you need to start with a deconstruction of shoes Last in pattern is very foremost. Um, if you want to get one tonight, if you wanted to order one, you could go to districtleathersupply.com. They have great patterns and last. You can get a pattern and last for 200 bucks right now. Um, and that's about as cheap as you're going to find one that is reputable. And it, it definitely comes down to that. I don't recommend buying anything from like Etsy or anything like that. Um, if it's, 30 bucks, it's probably not worth it. So. Yeah, um, let me see if I can, okay. I think I've got a good one. This is from an anonymous attendee. Uh, it says, what made y'all start teaching and making sneakers? So I'll answer that one first, Mike, and then you can just okay. follow it up. Okay with that. So 
Um, so what made me want to start teaching and making sneakers? Well, for me, when I took the class in Los Angeles, it was with around 45 other people, which is a lot of people. Um, surprisingly, we all walked out of there with all different looking shoes because we all chose from the same amount of leather. So mm -hmm. you know, it's just one of those things for me. It's like, I've always loved footwear. I'm a consumer at heart. I always have been. I think I always will be. And just, I came at it from a tech side of things because I used to work in retail in the sneaker industry, specifically with running specialty and then soccer specialty. And for me, it was like, yeah, I've just learned so much on the tech side of things. But now I want to take my, my, my tech knowledge that I know about shoes and cushioning setups and all that and apply it to my hands-on learning. And for me, that was like, that was like it for me. That class was like, okay, this is what you got I you hooked. I, yeah, I was like, and I'm telling you guys, once you make one pair of shoes, my oh, God, it's all boom. Like you're gonna, you're gonna literally, if you have a day job, it's gonna suck because you're gonna always be at your job, literally sketching out ideas or thinking of something, and then being like, oh my God, I can't wait till I get this. I can't wait till I get it done. It's oh, suck. constantly waiting on new leather, like threads. So buying, I still buy shoes for like, for myself from like Nike and yeah, because I'm a I'm a sneakerhead, and that's what got me into it. I've I've always been a sneakerhead, um, but it sucked not being able to get them. Like the sneaker game has become so crazy and so big. Like, going and standing in line doesn't guarantee for twelve hours doesn't guarantee you you're going to get the shoes. Ten years ago it did. If you put work in, you were going to get them. It doesn't matter nowadays. So, and then also, you know, like really last year, the UNC threes came out and um, Jordan three is my favorite silhouette, North Carolina, yeah. favorite colorway. So I had to get that shoe. And it also, it came out on my birthday. Well, yeah. I opened my box and it was scuffed. I went and I stood in line for like eight hours for it. My toe box was scuffed or my vamp had a scuff on it. Right. So, and then Kobe died. So when Kobe died, actually I have them back here. Uh, took a whole pair of Jordan threes that I had. We were in the pandemic and I was bored. So I ordered some paint, decided to paint these up, painted the jump man on the back into Kobe. And I realized I had a skill I didn't know I had. And from there, I just took off like all day and night. It was, I'm going to be great at this. And you know, I look at this shoe now, and like when I did it, I was like, oh my God, I'm, I'm, I'm great. Like, you know, I'm a prodigy. And I'm like, whoo, this was rough um, compared. But I put the work that, in this time. That to, me, that to me is like, wow, I would, that's awesome. Like, who wouldn't want to rock those? Like, if you're a big Kobe fan too, like, that's. Oh, cool. yeah. 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 I mean, that's. Look at that. That's freaking awesome, guys. Like, come on. And this was the first time I ever painted anything. Like, so, but you, you know, I just sent out a bunch of work. You know, I'm running a business. I don't have many personal pairs. Um, but in a year, I went from doing this to I made this from scratch. Yeah. You know, handmade with TVs in it. That's a pretty impressive jump. Um. And the people that are watching, y'all can do it too. Just I mean, y'all got a head start on what I had because I didn't have somebody give me a list of every tool I needed, and I had to ask 150 people and piece it together. Yeah, I do. I do actually see. Um, speaking of that, I see one question on here. If you if you're okay with it, I don't. I'll answer. Yeah. It says, uh, can you do it from anywhere? Do you have a location to be at? This is from Kendra Payton or Patton. Um, basically my answer to that is yes, you can do it from anywhere. Yes, you can do it online. I actually do offer online courses. However, in my opinion, getting your money's worth to me, that's what's important. And I would highly recommend coming to a class, even if it's not me, if there's someone that's closer to you, that's willing to teach you, it's honestly going to save you a lot more headache in the long run. Um, not that my online course is bad. That's actually how I started my business kind of was through online because of the pandemic. But it was just one of those things where you don't get the same vibe and you just don't get like the, the same, like today we're going to kick ass and make a shoe. Like that's not what it's like when it's online to me at least. Now for you, it could be a completely different scenario, but I'm just trying to be as transparent as I can with you on this. I know price wise, it's definitely way more attractive to do it online. 
But at the end of the day, you have to think about it. You still got to buy a sewing machine, which I did see someone ask a question about that. We can answer that one, Mike, later if you want. Um, but to anyone asking online or in person, it's going to come down to personal preference, guys. I'm a hands-on learner. I would prefer to spend the extra money and learn all in, in person and enjoy the experience in person, but that's just me. So. Yeah, and I totally agree. Like, So here, I didn't have the money. That was the bottom line. I, I didn't have the money, but I wasn't going to let it stop. Not having the money wasn't going to stop me from doing this. Um, if I would have had the money, I would have definitely chose the class route. Um, there was times where I was working on trying to make the shoe and I had to wait two or three days to get a response from someone of what my next step was. Um, that made it extremely hard. So I would, I would recommend going the class route over trying to teach it yourself. Um, you know, because it, it still in the end cost me a lot of money trying to teach myself just on wasting materials, buying the wrong tool, buying the wrong thread, like stuff like that, um, you know, thread number eight for the uppers from district leather number zero for the soles for district leather that's a good one to throw out there for y'all over there um i did see the person ask about the about the sewing machine and making it motorized i do not want to make mine motorized um i like the control of the hand crank of being able to you know exactly put that needle through when i wanted to put in um, if I was going to motorize it, you know, I plan on moving and getting an artisan, moving up and getting a nicer sewing machine, like how Brandon has. So I was, I'm going to jump straight to that instead of trying to do it yourself with this thing. Yeah. And I do know that someone also asked uh, the price of the sewing machines. Um, do, you, do you feel comfortable telling them the price? Yeah. Of so the price of this one, it varies. It's literally called a Chinese leather patcher. It's a crew. It's, a hunk of metal you can get them for as like cheap as like eighty dollars on amazon up to about 200 um there's uh check the reviews because yeah. some of them come more finished than others i think i bought one closer to the on the higher side of the price of what they were offered um yeah because yeah. i've learned real quick in this business that you get what you pay for yeah, I, on my hand of things, the artisan one, okay, so you have to take this into account. So when I bought that, I had no intentions of actually starting a business. This was actually just for a, a very expensive hobby that I didn't know how expensive it was going to get. Um, so when I ordered that, I had to have it delivered via to my one bedroom apartment. Um, and and I, his machine's heavy. Oh my God, guys, like you can carry it, but oh my God, it's the sewing machine head, which is what I showed you guys in previously, that itself is just, it's solid, man. It's just mm -hmm. super dense, but like that came on a pallet. And if you get stuff delivered to a residential address that has to come palletized, then that is very expensive. And that for me, I think was around three grand. Um, you can get cheaper ones out there like Texo. I think Texo has one called the 810, which I've never used. However, I have friends that have used it and they love it. And that one will run you about 16 to 1500, I want to say. I don't know about delivered to like a residential address, but if you can avoid taking it to a residential address, avoid it because it'll save you like a good like 200, $300 in shipping fees alone. Yeah. So the other thing too is if you buy one off of like Etsy, it will not come assembled most likely. Mm -hmm. It's because it doesn't come assembled. And what I mean by that is the head doesn't come attached to the table the pedal isn't set up the motor isn't drilled to the table none of that stuff is set up so if you don't know how to set up a sewing machine an industrial one you're gonna have a very hard time and a very frustrating time yeah you may have saved some money but your time aspect is going to suffer tremendously oh yeah and i mean mine it's like we showed the the different foots the roller towards the presser foot it's the marking on the leathers like I have to be extremely careful on mine not to put presses, like especially in suede. You know, I'm working on a on a shoe that I can't show right now because it's a surprise for someone, so I can't risk it getting out and seeing. But it's a dark suede, and you know, makes me nervous with my sewing machine because it leaves those presser foot marks. Um, and yeah. uh, no, you don't develop your own last. This is a uh, a. Uh, or Turner Jr. Not for like if you're making your own like 100% design, 
Um, you can develop your own last and you have to, but for what we're doing, the last is literally the silhouette and what gives the shoe the shape. So every shoe has a different last on, um, you know, well, not everyone, I guess like the Jordan one works for what the SB dunks and the Jordan ones, right. Yeah. Um, or can't, you know, slight difference. Um, so no, I, yeah, we do I, not develop our own last. I would um, say there's, yeah, it's one of those things where you could go out and develop one, but just remember you can't just buy one. And if you do, it's going to be extremely, expensive. extremely expensive. And, um, the, you know, the sneaker essentials course will talk, will, breaks that down in a depth when it talks about in the uh, production course part of what actually goes into producing a line of shoes. It's not like a t-shirt where you have small, medium, large, extra large. There's your four sizes, boom, out the door. No, there's 25 sizes and different widths. And it, they're, um, but you know, that course is a year long and definitely recommend y'all signing up for that too. Um, I, do, I do see another good question actually this one says what was your experience with the yellow brick you feel that they were worth it i think this is a good one to answer um because that's of course why we're here today uh do you want to kind of give your two cents on that one and then i'll follow it up yeah so um pretty much no matter if you're trying to do what we're what we're doing from making shoes to if you're trying to be a designer um, to selling, to marketing. There are so many positions in the shoe industry, um, like work positions um, for employment. You don't have to be a shoe builder. If you love shoes, take the yellow brick course because um, it goes over everything from start to finish. And you might find a passion or might find something that you're good at that you didn't know um, that there was a position needed for. Uh, the other break, you know, I got into it because I wanted to make shoes and it does a, it teaches you the business side as well. You know, the marketing, the marketing side of it, uh, it's a lot to go in into really quick, but you, no matter who you are, you will find needed information, inf information that interests you during that online course. Yeah. And then I guess to follow that up, I would say that for me, um yeah the yellow brick thing at first i i was all everyone's always apprehensive at first when they think of something like this right and they're, they're kind of worried like oh, I spent a lot of money on it. It's really worth it i mean that kind of depends on what your idea of worth it is and for me my my, my version of that was can, can i use this to help launch and push my business in the direction that i want to go with it and the answer to that is yes because otherwise i wouldn't be sitting here in front of you now Otherwise, I wouldn't have had the opportunity to make a shoe for PJ Tucker. Otherwise, yeah. Jeremy Lamb, like, it's, it's all this stuff. Like, I think a lot of people, and I do see this every now and then, and I'm, I've been a little silent on it at first, but a lot of people do think, like, oh, I completed the course. I should get a job immediately. Like, that's, that's not how this works, guys. Like, yeah, the course is more or less helping you find your place in the sneaker industry. Exactly. exactly. Um, and it is there. It's it's there. I mean, it's it's not like, honestly, if you make big enough waves in whatever it is you're doing, you're gonna get noticed by somebody at some yeah. point. Like, I mean, uh, like incidents that I just happened to have made a shoe for PJ Tucker, or you made a shoe for Jeremy Lamb. Jeremy Lamb, you know, like one of my idols, Souls by Slur, who is a great one of the best painters. Paints all Drew Breezy sleep. Ninety percent of the NFL he paints their cleats for. You recognize yeah. my work on Instagram? Like that was huge to me. You know, yeah. Um, yeah, it's definitely something to, to celebrate for sure. But yeah, to just back that up. Like, I, I do believe, and I'm not just saying this because we're not paid by Yellow Brick to do this, guys. Like, this is just like something that Mike actually came to them and was like, hey, we think this would be worth it. And they were like, yeah, we do too, actually. And mm -hmm. us just being transparent again with you guys, just letting you know that, like, it's worth it, but you got to put in the work. And exactly, exactly. Classroom, guys. I know that it's not going to happen overnight. It, yeah. it, like you even if you you know my instagram and facebook i've had like when i made these shoes with the tvs in them they went crazy online right mm -hmm. but still you know that data off it it doesn't overnight instantly be a success like you have to really want it and 
put your drive into it um, and practice, practice, practice. Yeah, um, Mike, do you, I see a really, this is an easy one to answer, not as deep, because I know we've kind of gotten down that road, but uh, it says, what is your favorite design that you've made and how long did it take? I mean, personally, my favorite design would have to be the Jeremy, would be the Jeremy Lamb shoe just because of the accomplishment of that. Like, not many people make it to the NBA, less people hand make a pair of shoes for an NBA player. Much less, to be 100% honest, I had an opportunity to do a custom shoe for Jeremy Lamb, and it was originally supposed to be a painted pair. But knowing that I wanted to build pairs, I took my chance. And that was the first shoe I ever made. So, you know, that took me about two weeks. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, now, now I can get a good quality pair done down. Um, if I have nothing else going on, you know, because I'm a one-man show, uh, if I have nothing else going on and I had to get a pair done, I can get a pair done in two to three days. Um, yeah. with the equipment that I have. Yeah, I would say for me, like the fastest I've ever gotten a shoe done. Now, granted, this was for me. This wasn't for a client. Exactly, and there, that, that's a big difference too. I want to get a customer's pair done in two or three no, days. No, no. Um, but I, I ended up getting my pair done in about, uh, I want to say three, two to three days. And yeah. they were a pair that was using that like glitter fabric that you guys might see on my Instagram. And let me tell y'all, that sucked. That was not. You're still, you're still finding that places, aren't you? Yeah, I am. But I would say my favorite, my favorite design. I'll show it to you guys. And this is a more of a sentimental reason. This is what I made when I took the shoe surgeon class. Um, and you can see how like <laughs> I laugh at this shoe now because like, good God, the stitching is just like what? <laughs> like come a long way. I know, but that's just one of those things. Like, what in the world is going on there, guys? Oh but, yeah, yeah, over into the van. Yeah, but yeah. hey, you know, uh, uh, mine. I don't know. I've I've knock on wood. I'm I'm trying to be humble. My stitching's been good. Yeah. Um, I, I just found a natural gift at, at this craft. Um, uh, like Brandon, you've seen you've seen my first shoe and my second. I get better with every pair, but Jeremy Lamb didn't believe that that was the first shoe I ever did. You know, <laughs> like he wanted, he wanted to argue about that. Like, no, there's no way. Um, so I, I, I'm blessed in that aspect. Um, but I've also, I've had a practice and I've spent long, late night and hours, you know, studying and, you know, picking people's brains. Um, yeah. And then, um, I do see, we'll answer like a couple more. I know. Yeah. We'll I've tried to type some answers. Some people I've answered like 22 between. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, another one, I, I kind of want to do more simple ones just because I want to yeah. kind of work ones off, but someone says, yeah. uh, let's see, where do you got your outsoles? Good question. Very simple to answer. Here's the thing. Um, me and Mike and several other cord wingers out there, we, we like to stick to what's true. And we like to try and buy our soles from Nike, from Adidas, whoever it may be, if we can. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, since you guys know, like sneaker industry is kind of like, nope, you're not getting anything at retail nowadays. Yeah, most of my Jordan Winkle, guess what, guys, you have to come from Goat or StockX or like a local shop that yeah, I Yeah, I mean, yeah. $400 for a pair of soles is like something you have to build in. So when we say, like your our price is starting at twelve hundred for me for a custom shoes. I know Brandon, um, he calls for a little bit more as he deserves than that. Um, plus a sole source because this shoe right here, this red bottle, it might cost one hundred and eighty dollars to find one today, but tomorrow it could be two forty. Y'all know that it, we all know how the sneaker game is right now. Um. So, and I only use authentic pairs. Um, yeah, if not, it's is one hundred percent fake. They're different, but you know, even the ones you see on the Chinese sites, they have like a great through them. They're they're like hollow squares. They're not this solid. You know, it is an air bubble in there. So, oh, I think that um, you know, it it really just comes down to ethics again uh could we go out and get fake souls yeah we could i could tell you exactly where to go get those souls mm -hmm. no 
Why? Because I don't want to give business to, to, to people like that. And I just don't think it's like going into a resale shop, guys. Like we're trying to make luxury higher end products than already exist, not lower, less quality yeah. products. Yeah. Um, can you, some guys asked if we can hit you. See, see yeah. Adidas. Yeah. Brandon, Brandon, go on ahead and show them. Um, yeah. Okay. That's either red, easy. It's, it's actually orange, but yeah, it's uh. Orange. This was literally my like. This was my first build after taking the shoe surgeon class. <laughs> Keep in mind, I had no idea what I was doing. Yeah, and that's a one piece shoe. That's extremely hard to do, y'all. Like that. I mean, like the stitching there is not bad, right? That's all hands. No, down. not at all. But you're talking about, you know a panic attack of taking a sole off you mess up the boost like yeah and i wore these to the state fair in wisconsin and my feet killed because this was like a this this is not real gator this is or whatever it was supposed to be this is like a faux gator or whatever uh, a vinyl type i like didn't put enough foam in the heel and like my heels were chafed like they were just gone. Like that's I'm like, my favorite part of being able to make a shoe honestly is being able to adjust the thickness of the shoe like especially like aj1 highs i'm not a super fan of how tight they normally are you know all the way up your ankle so i put a little thinner foam in my in my personal pairs on i will say i, I, will say, I know we've kind of taken away from the original question but i forgot to show this and i want you guys to see it i um and if you followed me on instagram you've seen this before but if you haven't Okay, so I've got four pairs of uppers right here, right? That are all the same, they're different sizes. However, what was wrong with this? This is me being transparent with you guys. And if Mike has any like mess up uppers, I'm sure he'd show them too or whatever, but basically- I like, do, they're all hanging from my ceiling. It's my shoe graveyard. But basically <laughs> what you're looking at, like the first big order I got was for six pairs of shoes for the same, like, same style. So it was an off-white, Air Jordan 1 low obsidian. That's what this was. So I had to make my own pattern kind of, I had basically like figure out how I was going to go color blocking wise and all that kind of stuff. And man, let me tell y'all this project, it, it almost took the life out of me because there are so many times on these uppers where I got so close to finishing, right? I mean, you got the tongue tag on one of them. I mean, damn, like, look at that. Like I actually had a legit tongue tag and this was yeah. all ready to go, but like, Little things like this, like my Dremel just decided to skip up there because I wasn't paying attention. Uh, let's see, what's wrong with this one? Oh, I didn't, I, I accidentally skived off part of the lasting. Yeah. I think guys, I could have got away with this, but I, I didn't want to because I know that what this person paid is not this right here. This and is not people ask why they call so much. Y'all have to think of all that leather right there. Yeah. You're not even considering the time. All that leather that was wasted you know like that's money um, yeah and then on top of that this right here i don't even get started this is just because i didn't do my spell check and like i got so pissed off that i decided to take off all the letters and just chuck the shoe across the studio your cut some your cut some spare <laughs> oh stop i'm not even gonna talk about that <laughs> and that's what a shoe is going to look like right there the bottom of it um right before you put the sole on it is going to look like like that, um, you're probably thin it out a little bit. Um, yeah, it hasn't been skived or anything. Yeah, it skives uh, those lumps out. Um, but lasting boards, all of that will be on the list that we're going to put together on our um, on our Instagrams. We're going to share our same list on um, you know hill counters, all this, and where to get them. Um, we're going to try to keep it simple and send you know get you as much in one location as you can if you want to start doing what we're doing. Um, yeah. And then also, Brandon, I, I believe that uh, everybody that's attended will be getting an email um, with this recorded and there will be the 25% off link for Brandon's August class, which I highly recommend you take if you are able to. Um, well, he's not a bad place, guys, I promise. I promise you guys. And good yeah. luck. They sucked last night. We're not going to talk about that, but <laughs> so, I don't want to hear anything about it. Just, they were trash last night. But anyways, hey, Katie, um, have the best game ever. <laughs> anyways, um, we'll do. Uh, I definitely appreciate. Want to say thank you to um, everybody at Yellow Brick, Brick um, for allowing the opportunity. You know, I reached out to them, and 
you know, with a cold shot. And that, that goes to show everyone that wants to, even if you're not wanting to do shoes, no matter what it is, put yourself out there. You never know who's going to respond and what it could lead to. Because without me just putting myself out there, me and Brandon wouldn't be doing this tonight. Um, so yeah. Definitely appreciate them. Um, I, 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 I do have, I'm sorry, there's like one last question. Though. Yeah, definitely, definitely. But I just told Mike a story about this yesterday, um, but someone, I think it was, uh, I don't know how to pronounce this, last name is Car Carrera is what it looks like. It's uh, basically, she's, she or he, excuse me, says, question, when rocking your customs, is there any stigma on people thinking they are fake? Since nowadays, there is so much hype on the original release known Jordans, is custom sneakers changing the game? Okay, so quick little story about this. I won't make it long, I promise. Uh, basically I had done an AJ one low of like, kind of like this, but like it was red glitter fabric is what it was. The one uh, they all might've seen it in the marketing. We yeah. used it for the marketing ads for this it's webinar as well. Pencil AJ ones is what the name was. It was for Christmas. I, I did like a Christmas pack and I was like, all right, I'm going to rock these back home in North Carolina. And, um, everyone in the airport, I always wear my stuff at the airport because one, I want to strike and see if I can get any customers, obviously, because mm -hmm. like that, wear your own stuff, wear <laughs> your own stuff. I saw somebody ask what we were wearing today. And I hate to say, I, you know, I'm at home inside right now. So I don't even have shoes on. I ain't wearing any high shoes. It's just a pair of <laughs> Anyways, um, the story was what I was saying is because you asked about stigma about hate. I was at the mall and you'll know where this is Crabtree Valley mall. Um, yeah. I, I was at the mall and I had just gotten out of a sneaker store there called Courtside. And I had basically, everyone in there loved them, right? But as soon as I got out of there, I accidentally kind of just so happened to cut somebody off while merging with like the traffic there. Cause it's just like nuts how, how crazy that mall yeah, is. Yeah, it's crazy there. Well, this dude, I, I heard him like muttering about me and I felt bad. I wanted to turn around and be like, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Like, it, I'm, I really feel bad about that. But then he started talking about what I was wearing and I heard him the whole time. And this is back when we had to wear masks and stuff. And he wasn't being very quiet. And he was like, this dude with some fake ass knockoff Jordans in front of me. And I'm just like, like, there is a, there is a difference. So the line is going to be, if you try to 100% like imitate something, right. That's fake. We're yeah. creating nicer more unique designs than yeah, what's it, out there. It was like not even about that. It was just like, bro, like I know you probably think I got these off of like Alibaba, but guess what? I didn't. Like, yeah, I, I handmade these shoes. There's literally wow. blood, sweat, and tears like going into this shoe. But do I think there's a stigma? I always think there. It's it's controversy. Anything controversial like this will always have some type of stigma or whatever. My advice to you, if you're ever worried about wearing your own customs, wear them. Wear your own damn customs. Do whatever you want to do. Because at the end of the day, as long as you stay true to what you're doing and what you're wearing and what you're about, why should it matter what anyone else thinks? Like, that's how it is with any sneaker. I like plenty of general release shoes. For instance, like today, a pair of Ultra Boots. Yeah, I mean... My favorite shoe. This is my favorite shoe, hands down. Like, and that's the thing. People just hate on people for that for no reason. But that's getting a little bit off topic. But anyways my say on, on yeah season. and I, I just feel like it's you know rock what you want to rock um it always comes down to that and when you see our shoes in person there's no they, they speak for themselves of what the difference between this like the camera doesn't show this italian suede the way you see it in person um and so that it speaks for themselves when you see a parent person yeah. um, that are quality. Um, yeah, so, sorry, I was just responding to somebody else's question, but yeah, anyways, other than that, guys, I wish we had more time, because Mike yeah, and I- kind of ran over already, um, yeah. <clears throat> but I definitely appreciate you joining me, Brandon. Oh, um, hey, thanks to Yellow Brick, thanks to you. Like, honestly, this, is, this has been awesome. I wish maybe we should, find a way to do something more like this in the future because it seems like a lot of people want to know more about it um, yeah obviously if any of you guys have questions feel free to reach out to me and mike i mean yeah our, our instagram handles um send us messages we we will definitely help in any way we can um yeah but with that said i think uh 
think we're going to round it off, guys. So thanks for attending, everybody. Yeah, thank you all so much. Everybody have a good night, and good luck on your journeys making a pair of shoes. Yeah, let us know what you get. See you guys later. Thanks.